Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Good yourself? Good. So, um, another topic that's kind of cool to look into is that, you know, it's things are easier if you were to divide an expression by linear. Yeah. Well, how about if it's a quadratic? Wow. If it is quadratic, we have to really think about it. Yeah. But there is a technique which I can show you. Okay. So, if you divide by a quadratic function, in that case, uh, what should be the remainder? One degree lower? That is a linear, right? Yeah. So you can take remainder as ax plus b and then work out with the division statement to solve it. So we'll see that also in our example. Okay. That's a great thing. So let's go to the board and do it. Shall we? Okay. Okay. Sure. That's great. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope you're enjoying our series on outdoor learning with Gurmeen. Gurmeen, let me thank you once again for an excellent question. You wanted to know how to find remainder without using long division when the divisor is quadratic. Well, we all know that remainder theorem is valid only for linear divisors, correct? But if the divisor is quadratic, how do we find the remainder without using long division? That's indeed an excellent question. So I'll take up two examples to show you the technique. It is uh, an excellent technique and can be always utilized to find remainder without long division when divisor is quadratic. The example before us is x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed minus x square minus x plus 3 divided by x square minus 1. We need to find remainder. So the question is find remainder. Okay. Now, if the divisor is quadratic, what kind of remainder do you expect? That's my first question. Let me write it down. If divisor is quadratic, then remainder is ax plus b I'm writing. y linear. If divisor is quadratic, remainder is linear of the form ax plus b. Right? This is important to understand. Right? Now basically, we have our function f of x, which we are dividing by x square minus 1. Now I could write this x square minus 1 as x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I prefer to write it in x uh, factored form to find the remainder. Well, we also know that the division statement is that f of x could be written as the divisor, which is x plus 1 times x minus 1 times some quotient qx plus remainder, right? Now, remainder is, uh, let's say, remainder r. We don't know what this remainder is, but it is of the form of ax plus b. So I could write this as that the function f of x is equals to x plus 1 times x minus 1 times some quotient plus ax plus b. Does it make sense? since the remainder is going to be of the form ax plus b. Now see what happens when I write 1 here. What is f of 1 equals to? As soon as I write 1 here, I get 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 1. Now 1 minus 1 is 0, right? Times any quotient. Plus 1 for x gives me a plus b. Now, first part becomes 0, and so we have f of 1 equals to a plus b. Do you see that? So we get a linear equation. Now, what happens if I write f of minus 1? If I write minus 1, then this factor becomes 0, and I get minus a plus b. So I get two equations. Do you see that? So this is the basic concept. So we get two equations. Let me call them as equation 1 and 2. 
Now if I know value of f of 1 and f of minus 1, which I can definitely figure out from the remainder theorem, I can actually solve this question, right? See how. Let's find what is f of 1. So we know that the function is, we know what is f of x. f of x is x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 3, right? This is the given function. So the value of this function at 1, f of 1 is 1 plus 2 minus 1 minus 1 plus 3, which is 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, take away 2 is 4, and f of minus 1 is going to be, let's substitute 1, this becomes negative 2, that remains as negative 1, this becomes positive 1, and then plus 3. So in this case, uh, the positive numbers are 3 and 1, 4 and 1, 5, take away 3 gives us 2. Correct? So we get these two values. f of 1 is 4 for us. f of 1 is 4, right? So we can substitute this value 4 here and we get a plus b equals to 4. And f of minus 1 is 2. So minus a plus b is 2. You get an idea, right? So likewise, we can actually solve these equations, correct? So if I substitute these values, let me call these equations as uh, equation 3 and 4. We just found the values of f of 1 and f of minus 1. Then we get an equation that a plus b is equals to 4 and minus a plus b is equal to 2. Correct? That's how we get our equation. Now it is easy to find the values of a and b. Now, if I add these equations, if I add these equations, what do I get? a and a cancel, we get 2b equals to 6 or b equals to 3. Perfect. Since b is 3, we can find what a is, right? So from here, we know a is 4 minus b. So a is equals to 4 minus 3. So a is equals to 1. Since a is 1, what is the remainder? Remainder r is equals to ax plus b. Now we know the values of a and b. a is 1 and b is 3. So we can get x plus 3 as our remainder. Right? So in our case, remainder is x plus 3. Do you see how we found the solution? We found remainder without doing long division. Now, as an added exercise, I would like you to perform the long division and verify the answer. Okay, so do that part. Let me take another example. So, this time, we'll divide x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 3 by x squared minus 3x plus 2. So, I've just taken a different divisor. Uh, well, uh, so the function is this, right? Well, we could write this divisor x squared minus 3x plus 2 in factored form as uh, 2 and 1, right? So x minus 2 times x minus 1, right? That gives you. So as we saw last time, it is a good idea to find the value of this function for x equals to 2 and 1, right? So let's find what is f of 2 equals to. For f of 2, we'll substitute 2 in this equation. For x, we get 2 to the power of 4 minus 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 2 plus 3, right? And that is equal to 2 to the power of 4 is 16, right? Uh, minus 8 plus 4 minus 2 plus 3. Uh, that is equal to 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12 minus 2, 10, plus 3, uh, 13, right? Okay. So let's use calculator better to use all our calculations. So 16 minus 8 plus 4 minus 2 and then plus 3 equals to 13. So we get a value 13 for f of 2. Let's find what is f of 1 equals to. So f of 1 
is we are using remainder theorem 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 3 so so we get positive values of 3 plus 1 4 and 1 5 take away 2 is 3 right now we can see that this whole thing x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus x square which is our function minus x plus 3 is definitely equal to that divisor which could be written as x minus 2 times x minus 1 times some quotient which we don't know plus we know a remainder of the form ax plus b so it's clear remainder is going to be ax plus b since the divisor is quadratic perfect so basically this is our division statement the function is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder right remainder has to be linear since the divisor is quadratic now if i substitute one here i get f of one right if i substitute plus one this is function so we get f of one which is equal to we just calculated f of one as three so let me write three here now substituting one will make this part zero right this becomes look here one minus two times one minus one that is zero so that makes the first term zero and here we get just a plus b since x is one so we get one of our equations let me write down here which is a plus b equals to three that is one equation now if i substitute two then what we get so f of 2 is calculated to be 13 that is equals to 2 minus 2 now this term becomes 0 right 2 minus 1 times q of x now when you substitute 2 you get 2a plus b right so we get 2a plus b as equal to 13 as our second equation right since it is clear this term is zero so the whole thing becomes zero in the first case that was zero is it okay so this was just equals to a plus b and this is equals to 2a plus b perfect now we are left with two equations to solve a plus b equals to 3 let's call this as equation 1 and this is equation 2 to solve these equations we can just subtract one from the other so if i do equation 2 minus equation 1 what do i get so 2a minus a is a equals to 13 minus 3 which is 10 so we get the value of a as 10. now if i have a as 10 b is equals to minus 7 right so so if a is 10 then we know b is equals to 3 minus a which is equals to 3 minus 10 or minus 7 since we know a is 10 and b is minus 7 right so b is minus 7 a is 10 so we have our remainder which is ax plus b right so remainder which is ax plus b should be equal to what 10x minus 7 is that clear so that becomes the remainder when you are dividing this function with the quadratic function x square minus 3x plus 2. So I hope this concept is absolutely clear. I hope the process is clearly understood. I'll provide you with few links for extra practice. Feel free to search my videos for more. Now that brings us to the mid chapter review. Take up the test so that you ensure that you have understood so far what all has been taught we'll not take up polynomial equations and inequalities thanks for watching and making useful suggestions to make this anil gurmeen series a really valuable one thank you and all the best